Hi, I'm Judy Tai. Abji, thanks very much for joining us today. I hope you had a great weekend. And for those of you who are wondering when we're going to be dealing with the murder that occurred over the weekend, or that at least we heard about over the weekend, we have set aside Friday's show for that. Uh, today, as you know, we've got a special presentation because we have a guest with respect to the WCB, and then we have a two-part special on health care. And on Thursday, we're talking about Jericho Hill. But today, we're going under the heading of government programs. As you know, we've talked about family maintenance in the past. We'll be talking about Jericho Hill later this week. We've talked about youth employment. Today, we have Judge Gill, who's the head of the Royal Commission on the WCB. And we wanted to give you an update. Many of you will remember Judge Gill from earlier this year, before a lot of the lion's share of the work got underway, before the public hearings. The first report came out on October 31st. And in my opinion, hasn't received the attention it should have because it's made recommendations to deal with every workplace in the province. Now, for those of you who don't understand how WCB works, I know for me it's a little bit confusing, we decided to replay uh, at least one minute of the show that we brought you in the spring, and you'll notice that Lee McKenzie has put it together. She looks a little differently for the first minute, and then we'll tell you about the Royal Commission. Let's take a look at the story. The Workers' Compensation Board covers virtually every worker in the province. The idea is if you're injured on the job and you need time off, you should get medical attention, you should get benefits, and you should get retraining if necessary. The Workers' Compensation Board requires many workplaces to have a first aid attendant. That's the first link in the chain when it comes to workers' compensation. Now, oh yes, here we are. Let's say I've just cut my hand. Now, we're going to go find the first aid attendant. Uh, at least that looks like lipstick to me, but we'll still cover it up and then we'll have to do some paperwork. Okay. Get you support that for me. We'll put this on quickly. Now, what about the paperwork? Ah, there we go. Fill out a 7A report, which goes out to worker, workers' compensation. So here's the Form 7A, and if it starts a file, it goes in here with all the other claims. In fact, in this province in 1996, 189,000 workers' compensation claims were filed. 95% of those claims were resolved without appeal. However, it was the 5% which went unresolved that became an enormous issue. Many of these cases involved long-term disability and many members of the public demanded the government look into the structure and operations of the WCB. Finally, in the speech from the throne in 1996, Premier Glenn Clark called for a royal commission. Judge Gurmant Singh Gill was finally appointed about one year ago to head up the commission with Oksana Excel from the business community and Jerry Stoney from the labor sector. Their mandate was to report out in several stages and on October 31st of this year they reported out on health and safety regulations in BC workplaces and on the way the WCB has been dealing with workers. So the first report is out, and it makes recommendations, as she said, that affect all workplaces, including self-employed people who have no employees. It should be quite interesting to find out why Judge Gill made some of these recommendations. There's also a change in structure recommended. And if you're out there and you're fighting with a WCB file, feel free to phone in. We are going to try to keep things a little short when it comes to the calls, because there's a lot of material to cover. But we want to hear from you at this number after the break. a cheesy moment you might want to miss and here's one you don't so go get some crackers apple jelly and cheddar cheese put the cheese on the crackers spoon on the apple jelly voila you can't get any cheesier well then again maybe you can this cheesy moment is just a reminder when you've got cheese you've got choice Magical Moose, Eaton's Holiday Jester, greatest of all gift-giving suggesters, with Eaton's gifts, Astronomic, Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein, Sony, to Panasonic, Barbie, Lego, fragrances galore, weekly deals in every store, all with Eaton's famous guarantee, but don't forget me, Eaton's oh, 993 we are your holiday store. This is an important message from Canada Post. We have arranged with our union to deliver most federal payments on November 26th. We have also offered to deliver provincial and municipal checks. 
For delivery information on federal checks, call 1-888-440-7744. For others, contact your municipal or provincial governments. In the meantime, we are making every effort to restore full postal service. This message is paid for and brought to you by Canada Post. The owners of Big O Tires from Vancouver Island and Powell River demonstrate how important tires are when braking. For the ecstasy of all season high performance without the agony of the price, it's Yokohama Abbott H4 with Yokohama's 24-hour roadside assistance and road hazard protection plus. Also available, Yokohama Abbott T4 with a four-year 100,000 kilometer tread warranty. Time for change? Big O Tires, a reputation you can ride on and they'll stand in front of you. The Workers' Compensation Board has been, uh, there's a recommendation that's come out of the Royal Commission. It just came out a few weeks ago, hasn't received a lot of attention, but it does make recommendations to change the structure of the WCB and the way every workplace in the province functions, including the workplace of self-employed people. This is the Royal Commission on Workers' Compensation in British Columbia. The first part of the mandate has reported out, and I believe this report's also on the internet, isn't it? That's right. Okay, on your, and this is Judge Gill, as you may remember him from the spring those of you with us. And we had a lot of fun last time you were on. I think we did, yeah. Okay, and I see all the lines jammed, so we're going to um, have a little bit of fun here, but uh, I want to start by asking you this. It seems like at the beginning of your report, and I, I want to congratulate you on this, you've said, uh, from what I've read, that the WCB is in effect in a conflict of interest. It, it's producing its own rules, it's checking to see if the rules are followed, and then it's trying to enforce those rules. And you've said it's like the police writing the criminal code. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I think perhaps a conflict of interest might be uh, not necessarily the most appropriate description of what the problem is. Well, you can't say that, but I can say that. <laughs> well, really what it comes down to is um, a civil rights issue, I think, in some respects, and uh, an accountability issue. Um, uh, as I, uh, we've noted in the report, I think that uh, it can be dangerous to have non-elected uh, individuals, bureaucrats, mm -hmm. uh, essentially making law. Right. And, uh, and, and those fact, regulations are law. And when you compared it to all the other jurisdictions in Canada, you found this was the only one where, when it came to even the regulations, not necessarily just the law, that it was, it was WCB making its own regulations as well. So it was really right in the thick of it. Yeah, it's those regulations that are a form of law that people uh, um, have to comply with. And if they don't, it can be, compliance can be enforced against them. So we simply say that uh, certainly we acknowledge that the, that the board has considerable expertise in uh, the development of those regulations and in making uh, recommendations for what might be appropriate regulations, but the actual uh, uh, responsibility for promulgating them, in other words, giving them, breathing life into them, right. uh, Laws should, rest, regulations with, or should rest with cabinet. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing is that you've recommended the creation of an occupational health and safety agency. Now, this sounds like another bureaucracy, but you're saying that what you want is one agency that deals solely with injury prevention and then the Workers' Compensation Board does nothing other than compensation and rehabilitation. Yeah, throughout the report we, we describe the, um, the uh, agency that would deliver occupational health and safety service, services as the, as, as the appropriate, as that agency. Mm -hmm. We haven't uh, necessarily uh, decided yet that that agency should be different from the agency that also delivers compensation services and rehabilitation services. As you know, currently it's the Workers' Compensation Board that delivers uh, all of it. services in all three areas, both right. prevention, compensation, and rehabilitation. We simply point out that uh, uh, there could be considerations uh, that need to be taken into, into account with respect to Such deciding... Such legal words. Well, there could be considerations which may be taken into account. Yeah. L let, me, let me say it this way. Um, some 80 years ago, when the right of workers to sue their employers was right. taken away right. uh, in what's called the historic compromise, the two essential features of that compromise uh, were that uh, workers would be um, compensated irrespective of fault. Right. On the one hand, and with respect to employers... I mean, regardless of whose fault it was that they were injured, they were going to get compensation. Yeah, even okay. if they were injured by their own negligence. And for that, they, they can't sue their employers. Right. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, the other aspect of the uh, compromise was that uh, employers would uh, be collectively responsible. They would all pay into a system mm -hmm. uh, uh, collectively mm -hmm. from which uh, uh, you know, that fund would then compensate workers. Now, what we've identified in our report is that those two principles, which is no-fault compensation mm -hmm. and everybody pays the same from an employer perspective, they don't necessarily promote safety. Right, because it's a totally different issue. Yeah. Okay. We're so, going to, I want to take a couple of phone calls and we've got so much meat in this report and what we'll try to do is through the show, 
give you a chance to talk to some of it. Like, right. is the new uh, agency going to be an NDP job creation program, for example? <laughs> All right. That's a little joke. That's a little partisan joke. Okay. Let's start with Stephen in Victoria. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Hi, um, go ahead. My question is, uh, how can workers' compensation uh, doctors recommend that you go and see a specialist or you're through your own doctor, and they then turn around and uh, send their report to workers' comp, where work, uh, workers' comp doctors then overrules it? Yeah. Right, and so, that, that's an excellent question. You know, how, how can they continue? They make the recommendations. You go off and do what they state to do. Mm -hmm. They overrule it. They cut you off. Then you go through this long process. I've been off for a year now, and I'm awaiting to appeal it. Right. So how can, yeah, well, that's an excellent question. And unless I missed it in here, you haven't dealt with any of that um, in, in terms of, uh, of, of medical uh, involvement. Yeah, I think the, this caller's question uh, relates to the um, delivery of medical services, uh, both with respect to assessing uh, an injury as to whether it's compensable or not, whether it arose out of the course of employment, and there could be a medical component to that, as well as uh, opinions of uh, treating practitioners with respect to what kind of treatment is required once the condition is acknowledged to be compensable. Those are both issues that uh, will relate uh, to the final report that we'll be uh, issuing in September of uh, 2008. I think what he wants to know is, are you going to be able to take uh, issue with the fact that WCB has a group of doctors who will overrule someone's private physician? Are you going to take issue with that in, in a, an upcoming report? Yes, at all? we'll be you looking will. at that. Okay. Are you actually dealing with the College of Physicians and Surgeons or the BCMA on that issue? We're not dealing with them uh, uh, in any kind of an ongoing sense. We uh, expect to hear from uh, the BCMA mm -hmm. uh, in uh, some form or other. I understand that they are uh, working on a presentation for us, for uh, your a, next written, a written uh, okay. presentation that we will uh, most carefully study. Okay. And the next report, just so you know, is uh, due out September of 98. 98. Okay. Yes. Now we have John in Nanaimo. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Hi, fine, thanks. Go ahead. Okay, what I'd like to know is I'm on compensation right now, mm -hmm. and I'm hearing the horror stories, and I've got a couple of my own. You know, how could they treat you and, and say when you're in there taking the rehabilitation program that they start saying that your wife is cheating on you so that you break the rules and do not get compensated? You know, how can they torture your mind like this? And it's incredible what they get away with. How can you allow that to happen just so you don't have to pay the people out so they so get so upset they leave the program? Okay, well, uh, that's a, a very big question. M maybe I can rephrase it slightly. Uh, when Judge Gove did his examination of, of the, the workers who were dealing with people through Ministry of Children, Families, or Social Services, they found that many of the counselors didn't have the training required to deal with people. Um, and I've heard many people who have workers' compensation files like that last caller say that the person they're dealing with doesn't seem to have very good interpersonal skills. Are you looking into that aspect of it as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, this caller's particular concerns uh, have been echoed a number of times in the uh, public hearings that we, do, that we uh, conducted, uh, Judy, as well as in uh, any number of written submissions that we have received. And that is certainly something that uh, we will be looking at carefully. Really, it relates to the, um, uh, the programs uh, and services that the board delivers. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that requires, I think, uh, an evaluation or some guidance and direction with respect to the need for there to be uh, individuals at the board uh, that uh, are competent in terms of their... Uh, Evaluating uh, how good those programs are or the people... That as well, them? sure. The, the program itself has to be uh, one that works. Uh, it has to uh, uh, work with respect to selecting appropriate individuals to do certain tasks. Properly trained, people Pro who aren't going to be uh, telling people things that will make, uh, make them more upset. Training is very important, and uh, as well as support. Uh, these uh, uh, employees at the board need proper support. They need ongoing uh, education. It's not a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. So those are the kinds of things I expect that we'll be looking at to determine uh, whether those uh, programs are in place, uh, to what extent they're there, and if they're not... Uh, what needs to be done to make sure that uh, that the people that are delivering the services at the board mm -hmm. uh, are uh, are the appropriate people and properly trained to do it? Okay, so hopefully, uh, John and people like him will will be hearing that you will you know make recommendations on that in your next report or intern. We're going to show you a few things that came out of the report very briefly, and then we'll go back to the phones. And it's uh, it's things that I found a little bit mind boggling as far as uh, in the WCB Royal Commission's October 31st report, the commission looked into the existing WCB system, which is built like a big octopus, and examined its structure. Every workplace in British Columbia is governed by rules of occupational health and safety. These rules are divided into laws or statutes and regulations. 
There are 40 separate statutes and 84 separate regulations, all of which refer to workplace health and safety. And in many cases, there are many pages to these. Of these, 17 statutes and 32 regulations are at the federal level, and these are mainly under the jurisdiction of human resources development. But there are another seven federal agencies which also deal with occupational health and safety. The remaining laws and regulations are at the provincial level, and the majority of them deal with public as well as workplace health and safety <coughs> issues, everything from smoking in public places to where to put on hard hats. The main occupational health and safety rules in BC are the Workers' Compensation Act and the Workplace Act, and both are administered by the Workers' Compensation Board, which falls under the Ministry of Labor. But the WCB is neither a crown corporation nor a branch of the ministry. The other ministries which, which deal with some health and safety rules are the Ministry of Employment and Investment, Municipal Affairs and Housing, housing and the Ministry of Health. And that's, that's uh, right in itself will give you a big headache. You know, all yep. those different, I mean, how on earth are you possibly going to read through all those rules and regulations and some of them are this big just in one? Yeah, health and safety is by no means exclusively within the uh, jurisdiction, at least currently, of the Workers' Compensation Board. There are all sorts of other agencies that uh, deliver health and safety services, uh, either on an exclusive basis or uh, when it's mixed with other functions. Okay, I'll take another call, and we're talking now to John in Seashell. Hi, John. Hi, how are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I have a question. Uh, it's pretty complex, everything here, but I, I was injured in 1979, almost killed, and uh, my claim was compensable. After uh, approximately three, uh, four months, they told me that I was well enough to go back to work, which I did. Mm -hmm. And after that, it, uh, I really started having major problems with my back and uh, got to a point where uh, I couldn't even hardly walk. My right leg would go give, give out on me because of uh, nerve damage and everything else. But... I had to, I tried to reopen the claim, and I had nothing but problems with the adjudicator in Victoria, and as far as I'm concerned, his de decision has cost the compensation board a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, I finally had to push it, and I, uh, and, and I uh, ended up going in an operation myself in 1989, because I couldn't hardly walk anymore. Mm -hmm. And then they finally had to get more doctor's reports, and I kept getting a, re a report from the adjudicator that it was now a degenerative situation with my back that wasn't uh, related to the accident, which mm -hmm. was totally wrong, because eh? mm -hmm. records prove that I had no, nothing wrong with my back 30 years before the accident. They, they exhausted my claim, or right. my doctor's file. Right. Finally, I, I, I got through to some lady with, in, in Vancouver, mm -hmm. and she finally said, yes, there is justification here to reopen this man's claim. How I'm long still, did that take you then? This took me almost uh, five years after the accident, and I'm still fighting with the board right now. I've got a partial settlement. There is still room for improvement on it, mm -hmm. and I'm still go it's still going on. Here we are uh, okay. 16 years later, and I'm still fighting with the compensation board and trying to settle this whole thing. Wow. Well, I mean, I know you've heard many stories like that. Uh, sometimes it seems like the WCB is working against its mandate and spending a lot of money fighting people who have a justifiable claim. You know, one of the interesting issues I picked up from that call that we've heard about is uh, where there is indeed disagreement between uh, the workers' own treating practitioners uh, and uh, the official board position with respect to uh, what kind of treatment is required. And if there is that disagreement, then sometimes uh, the worker, the claimant, is put in the dilemma of deciding whether to follow the advice uh, of his or her own doctor and get the treatment that's being recommended on right. the one hand right. or follow the board's uh, position, uh, which is that it's not going to fund that treatment right and uh, I know and, and of there cases can be complications that arise with uh, with respect to that choice yeah I know of cases where people have followed what the board's doctors have told them and they've seriously damaged their bodies whereas their own physicians were telling them not to do it and there's no accountability in that but you're addressing a little bit of accountability in here yes um, we have to take a break we'll be back we're taking more of your calls and we also want to show you some of the things that Judge Gill has recommended in his report because we should know about it we'll be right back <laughs> Tam She is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. What a combination. Crunchy Werther's toffee and delicious milk chocolate. Mm. I keep one bag in the car, one on my desk, one in the living room, and one next to my bed. Now that's Werther's quality. Nothing but the best for my guests. It's going to be a nice evening. Werther's chocolates. It's brand new. The crunchy kind of Werther's toffee and luscious milk chocolate. 
Werther's Chocolates, the crunchy luxury. I start on them right after breakfast. <laughs> when you order the new cable package, you could win daily prizes, like great vacations, Sony home theaters and TVs, prize draws of $10,000 and a grand prize of $50,000, plus a daily cash bonus of $1,000 if your name appears when you're watching Teletoon, Space, Home and Garden Canada, The Comedy Network, Outdoor Life, or History Television. Order the new cable package now. Turn on, tune in, and win. The international hit comedy, The Number 14, rolls into town December 3rd through 21st at only one stop, the Belfry Theatre. Some performances are sold out, so call now and book your tickets for this smash hit comedy. The Number 14 at the Belfry. Don't miss the bus. You know it's a jungle up there. The Better Business Bureau offers you protection in today's business jungle. They handle consumer gripes and groans, offer mediation, arbitration, and inform the public about unscrupulous businesses. Look for the sign of BDD membership acceptance and check with your Better Business Bureau of Vancouver Island. Today we're doing a WCB update on the Royal Commission. Our judge is Judge Gurmail. Singh Gill, our judge, our guest, and he's the uh, chair of the Royal Commission, and there are two other members. Um, I'm going to take a call, and then we'll do a little bit from your report, okay. and we'll go back to the phones. We'll talk now to Ralph from Surrey. Hi, Ralph. Hi. Hi, go I'd like ahead. to thank Judge Gill for his recommendations and the Healthy and Safety Commission that he's brought forward. Mm -hmm. I know he hasn't done the reports for injured workers yet, but I'd like to give him something that I'd like to see him look at and that's the services between ICBC mm -hmm. and the Workers' Compensation Board. I, I'll give you a prime example. If there's a, if there's a, a lady that works for the, um, she's one of these, one's a traffic signal people. Mm -hmm. She got nailed by a car, a flag person. She gets hit by a car. Mm -hmm. The Workers' Compensation Board, and then I've heard this from, and done many claims on the same problem, right. where... The workers don't have the right to sue ICBC because it's worker versus worker. It's now WCB. Now, the services to that injured worker are non-existent by the Workers' Compensation Board. Right. If the claimant goes six months into the claim, it's nothing but seven years of fighting and rhetoric by the board. Rather than dealing with the, with the concerns of the worker, mm -hmm. I think it's time they look at that ICBC, WCB thing, too, as, as well. Okay. And that's what I'd like to put to Judge Gill. Thank okay. you. Okay, well, thank you for that. And uh, I've, I've heard that kind of comment with other government agencies in WCB, that it becomes an in-house thing and it's very difficult for people. Are you looking at any of those relationships? Yes, that, that relates, uh, Judy, to the uh, issue of the worker-worker bar, where both individuals... The worker-worker bar? Yeah, which is... Which this is not a place where you go and have a beer. <laughs> no, okay. it's not. Uh, what it means is where, where both individuals uh, that, are, that are party to an accident uh, happen to be workers, and I'm speaking here in the, in the motor vehicle sort of roadway uh, context that, that Ralph has raised, where they're both workers, they're absolutely barred from uh, 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 suing one another. Oh, okay. Uh, even though they both have or may have uh, valid uh, insurance coverage through the Insurance Corporation of British Columbia. Uh, and that, uh, I think, is, is, uh, is an issue that is of concern to a number of people, where, that, where there is that kind of insurance in place, it's paid for, but they're not ac they're not able to access it because they're both workers. Because they're both workers. Oh, so, I didn't know that. So okay. that's an issue. I I, uh, I, I want to say that we will we will be looking at uh, when we analyze overall the uh, the issue of the worker worker bar and whether it should uh, indeed apply under all circumstances or or when it should not. Okay. Now I should mention to people whether you're an, if you're an employer or if, for example, you're a, a union representative and you deal with a lot of workers, you really should try to get a copy of this report. Uh, the first uh, 30 pages, at, at the very least, are, are very important. I know, the whole report for you, 180. We can't all read 180 pages. But you talk about the rights and the responsibilities of the workers, the, the workers, the employers, the suppliers, yes. and the people who are self-employed but have no employees. And I'm going to start with the self-employed with no employees. Okay. If you want to bring them in under the Occupational Health and Safety umbrella, I'm assuming you want them to start paying premiums as well. 
We haven't talked about funding the system just yet. That's a second uh, term issue. Well, I'll tell you one thing. A government, a legislator, is going to tack fun uh, fees on if, if you're accessing the system, you're going to have to pay for it. A lot of self-employed people will be outraged to think that they're covered by WCB if they're working at an office in their home, and yet that's a very strong recommendation here, is that they now be covered yeah. under occupational health and safety. How do you justify that? Well, let me address that, because I think that's a good question, and it's an important one that people understand. Uh, we, we have characterized prevention of accidents in the workplace as being the most important thing that, uh, in the area of workers' compensation that there can be. If you can prevent accidents, you don't need to worry and deal with the pain and suffering that accompanies injuries. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and accidents have been on the rise in many sectors. Sure, yeah. sure. They, they go up and they go down. But that aside, we've identified uh, prevention as being of paramount importance, as we say in the report. And uh, uh, the, the situation until now is, and currently is, that if you are a self-employed uh, individual without employees uh, who elects not to participate in the compensation side of the system by taking out insurance coverage, then if you're injured, you are uh, not entitled to compensation. But furthermore, the, uh, it, it's, it's not clear, in my view, it's not sufficiently clear, the uh, degree to which that individual has to comply with health and safety regulations when they could be, for example, in situations where their acts or omissions could bring harm to others in the workplace. Even though they're self-employed? Sure. Okay, so, now, you, so you get a self-employed individual, for example, who goes out onto a work site, mm -hmm. and uh, if he, doesn't, he or she don't have to comply with health and safety regulations, how do you enforce their safety so that they don't put others at risk in that workplace without okay. bringing them into the system. Uh, let's leave that aside for now because I'm sure some of the callers will ask you about that. But uh, you also talk about workers' responsibilities and then say that workers may be fined for not taking uh, um, adequate precautions and, and being injured. Yeah, that touches on the other area now uh, with respect to uh, 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 worker accountability. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you this was uh, somewhat of a contentious area. Oh, I bet. Um, but uh, the way we uh, analyzed it uh, was uh, to, to look at it from the issue of what is best for everyone in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, we recognize as a commission that primarily the obligation for, to ensure that the workplace conditions are health, healthy uh, and is safe with is with the employer. Because right. the employer uh, exercises primary control over the workplace, makes any number of decisions with respect to the production process. And yeah. that's where responsibility should lie. But, but the issue with workers is that sometimes employers can't control for a variety of reasons. Uh, workers uh, who, for example, know that they should be wearing hard hats but won't. Okay. So that's something that we can we can look at. I'm, I'm going to let the callers go. We're over time for a break, and we're okay. going to first show people how you can get more information. And I, I wish we had more time to, to do this in depth. Uh, here's how you can get more information about the Royal Commission report. You can write to 1440625 Howe Street, Vancouver, B.C., V6C 2T6, phone 604-660-0130, or toll-free 1-800-522-0312, fax 604-660-0199 and there's an email address as well and there's an internet site if you don't have internet capability you can go to most libraries and get a copy of the report www.bcroyalcom.org and uh, we'll be back after a quick break and so much to talk about we'll be taking more of your calls What a combination. Crunchy Werther's toffee and delicious milk chocolate. Mm. I keep one bag in the car, one on my desk, one in the living room, and one next to my bed. Now that's Werther's quality. Nothing but the best for my guests. It's going to be a nice evening. Werther's chocolates. It's brand new. The crunchy kind of Werther's toffee and luscious milk chocolate. Werther's chocolates. The crunchy luxury. I start on them right after breakfast. <laughs> I know, Santa. I like the velvet suit, too. But switch to polyester and we'll save a bundle. That's great, Scrooge. But I already save a lot of Canadian Tire, where this Citizen Microwave is quite the bargain at only $119.99. Plus, there's this sturdy Dirt Devil Upright Vacuum. It's available for just $169.99. I don't know. What do you guys think? Mm, no. Canadian Tire lets you give like Santa. And save like Scrooge. I'm never at home. Why would I leave my phone there? What do you get with Amigo Digital? 
every month you get 100 anytime minutes and 100 first incoming minutes free. Yeah, I'm free. Free. You get called display. Staying in touch doesn't mean stay in. And oh yeah, there's no long-term contract. I call shots. And you get it all for just $19.95 a month. Amigo Digital. It goes with you. Your telephone and Pacific Coast Savings MemberLink Touchtone Phone Banking. Put them together and you get 24-hour banking convenience. MemberLink gives you access to information on your accounts, lets you pay bills, and transfer funds from one account to another. And with MemberLink, you can access your account from any Touchtone phone. You can even use your cellular. MemberLink from Pacific Coast Savings. Touchtone phone banking convenience, 24 hours a day. We didn't do our question of the day today to allow you more time on the phones. You wanted to make a clarification, just yeah. and then we'll go right back. Yeah, just on that worker accountability thing, I just want to make sure that, that you understand that uh, the, the, the worker accountability mechanism through an administrative penalty, uh, like a ticket or something okay, so like that. Okay, so finding a worker. Finding a worker uh, will not necessarily mean that the worker won't be entitled to compensation if, if they're injured. Right. Uh, also, it should be made very clear that this is uh, not meant to replace the uh, employer's primary responsibility for safety in the workplace, but it's just an additional way to deter people right. uh, from you unsafe conduct. You just want the employer to be able to go up to the worker and say, if you don't put on that hard hat, I'm going to fine you 20 bucks, or I'm going to report you to the o Occupational Health and Safety. It group. wouldn't be the employer that could administer these fines. Oh, it, it would have be... to be the Occupational oh. Safety uh, Officer. Okay. Yeah. Now, we are going to take two calls in a row and then have you comment. We'll talk to Carrie in Vancouver. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Hi, I, go ahead. I was wondering, um, I was on a claim last uh, December. I hurt my ankle. Mm -hmm. uh, the doctors said it was okay for me to return to my present job, which was basically sitting down. I've now gone to a job where I'm on my feet eight hours a day, mm -hmm. and WCB says, well, you must have hurt your ankle between February of last year when you were okay to go back to work right. and now. Right. And they as much called me a liar. Right. I have done nothing to my ankle, but they will not cover my physiotherapy. They will not cover anything. And, I mean, if I would have known that, I would have just told the doctor, okay, I am not going to back, back to work for a year or two mm -hmm. to make sure that my ankle is okay. I thought it was a fair system, and I'm finding out now it's not. Okay, well, that's an excellent comment. There's another comment that's going to be, I believe, quite similar. So we'll let them both speak in the morning. Right. Okay, Sharon from Nanaimo. Hi, Sharon. Hi. First Hi. of all, Judy, I love your show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I, lo a lot of the callers, it's, you're right, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I was uh, on a claim from falling down a flight of stairs in 92. Mm -hmm. They paid. They had no disagreements then. Then you go back to work because, uh, you know, you feel like you're, you're fit and sure. you get re-injured and they won't pay. And you, all you do is want somebody to pay your massage therapy or your chiropractic bills or whatever. Right. But right. Uh, you go to 1200 a month down to... Uh, uh, 800 a month on UI, which right now is stuck in the mail, or you get 500 a month on welfare. And, I mean, it's not a fair system. It's really upsetting. You're on painkillers and you're supposed to appeal, and how can your brain work to be fighting them when you're, yeah. you know, all drugged up on painkillers? Okay, well, I think that's an excellent comment, and uh, I should let both of you know, uh, whoever your local MLA is, you can find their name in the blue pages. Uh, make an appointment with their constituency office and go down and talk to them because they should be working for you as well. But on, uh, with respect to the system there. Well, it, it uh, harkens back to that earlier call where, uh, where there is uh, perhaps disagreement between different doctors on, as to what uh, medical treatment or prescriptions are needed or appropriate. And, uh, of course, in this province, we have the fallback. Uh, if, uh, if need be, you can always rely on the medical services plan to some in, extent. In their case, they're talking about <coughs> physiotherapy and massage therapy and, and an injury that gets re-injured, and WCB won't help with those costs. Uh, yeah. is, is that any part of your mandate? Yes, it is. Uh, again, it relates back to the question of medical services, mm -hmm. uh, who should be uh, providing those services, mm -hmm. uh, whether it should be, uh, uh, whether, what role the board should have with respect to both assessment and treatment uh, okay. of claims. And, uh, and so that course, it's a very big part of what we're looking at. I guess there's another aspect that's really not in your department. In the health care department, should physio and massage therapy be covered if they will stave off surgery, for example, which is obviously not something you can look at. Your mandate is very big, but not quite that big. Yes. Uh, we have Joanne now from Uculet. Hi, Joanne. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just wondering. I hurt my back uh, at my job, mm -hmm. and um, I went to the work conditioning program, 
and the work conditioning program said I was okay to go back to work, but I told them I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And WCB cut me off on what uh, the work conditioning program said and not the doctor. Okay, and that's uh, obviously something we've heard. Now, the work conditioning program is part of a, a WCB, is it? I yes. I haven't heard that term. Yeah, we're, we're, that scenario that we're still looking into, and uh, so I don't want to be premature in my comments, but uh, there is a work conditioning program that, that I understand the board uh, has with certain protocols uh, for treatment. Is that the one in, in Richmond? There's, well, a, there's a well, treatment Rich center there. Well, yeah, there could be treatment centers in any number of uh, um, uh, communities, but the uh, Peterson Clinic in, uh, in Richmond is the big mm -hmm. uh, WCB rehab center, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a uh, uh, broad range of services that the board uh, uh, delivers there uh, that are rehab related. Okay, and in her case, I mean that's a, there again. You've got the uh, the different medical opinions clashing. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes it's it's difficult. There's there's a significant uh, body of medical opinion that says, uh, with respect to certain kinds of injuries, certainly soft tissue injuries, that uh, early intervention, uh, even though it might be painful, uh, uh, under uh, uh, some cases, is is what's needed. But in some so, cases, the WCB doctors are not even examining these people and coming up with conflicting comments. That's, sure. Yeah, well, we'll look for that comment in your next report. Uh, we now have Vlad from Surrey. Hi, Vlad. Hi, Judy. <coughs> I like to be short, but it's very hard because I've got lots of things to say, okay. but I'm going to try anyway. Um, I'm concerned um, about uh, the employers, you know, their role when they hire the people that are untrained and unfit to do the job, you know, and they hire them for the low wages as a helpers. Right. They, they give them a, a, a responsibility of running the machines, which they shouldn't do, and I've seen the people getting hurt all the time. Mm -hmm. um, they, I guess they are there for to make the quick buck, you know. And um, another thing that uh, it concerns me is the abuse of the human rights. Mm -hmm. When you are uh, hurt and when you are incapable of uh, of working and taking care of yourself and your family, right. and and they give you hard time because uh, it's an insurance company and they just want you off their back. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they give you hard time and say, well, you know. I got no, no, no way of uh, feeding my family. This is what just yeah. go to the welfare. And if you are a proud person and you don't want it, you refuse to go to the welfare, then it's your fault, you know, because mm -hmm. um, you had there something, you know, but uh, it's, 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 it's not the way it should be. Um, okay. There I, is, uh, I have to, I'm sorry, I, cut, I have to cut you off there, Vlad, or the judge won't have a chance to answer. So uh, what are your comments to that? Well, um, certainly uh, with respect to um, uh, uh, the... Uh, I've just drawn a blank here with respect to the two issues he raised. Um, um, well, he's talking about the, the difficulty if you're being referred to welfare and other agencies of okay, government right. and making, I'm sorry. feeding yeah. your family. You know, there, there's all sorts of leakage. Sure. You've got, you got this big there's, all sorts of, there's all sorts of leakage into uh, possibly um, uh, other social agencies that are that are uh, that are funding uh, indirectly workers' compensation uh, type costs. Well, and, workers' uh, comp is leaning <coughs> on these other agencies in a way. Well, uh, perhaps relying on them, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, but it's a, it's really a question of what is society's role with respect to occupational health and safety, and who's really paying the cost for when health and safety doesn't work. Okay, and that goes back to the beginning of your report. Very nice segue into, and that's why we need stronger occupational health and safety. We'll be right back. We'll take more of your calls, and we'll also show you another aspect of the report after the break. The Tetley tea folk keep making sure they're as fit as they can be to keep making Tetley Canada's favorite cup of tea. It's up to God to count perforations. Better not miss even one. It's taste exercises and obstacle races. And knowing around tea bag from 40 paces. So if you ever stop and wonder why Tetley tea is best, it's because when it comes to taste, Tetley tea folk never... Hey, don't switch that dial, because this is going to make you smile. For the holidays, Eaton's is taking $50 off the new Hoover Wind Tunnel Vacuum and the Hoover Steam Vac. And there's me, Mr. Magical Moose. <laughs> Only $9.93. What do you love to watch on TV? For me, it's sports. Everyone has their favorites. So into history. Now Rogers gives you more. 16 new channels in one great new package. More of what you want when you want it. Call it selfish. Call it instant gratification. For me, it's comedy. Call it Me TV. Order now and you can get Me TV for as little as $5.99 a month. Call one 888 Rogers one to order. <laughs> the paper. It's here. 
Check TV. It's here where you can't relax. Give me the keys! Are you nuts? Michael Keaton and Glenn Close rumble. Tuesday on Check TV. The paper. It's here. Mom, did you play with Barbie when you were a kid? I sure did. What did you play with, Dad? Hot Wheels. There were wheels back then? Now McDonald's has Princess Barbie miniatures and Hot Wheels city vehicles. Kids get one toy in each $2.99 hamburger Happy Meal you buy. Was there McDonald's when you were kids? Yes. But no Barbie Hot Wheels Happy Meal. <gasps> Glad we missed the olden days. Barbie Hot Wheels Happy Meal at McDonald's. Now when you buy a Happy Meal, toddlers can get their own Fisher-Price toddler toy. Just ask for one. Awesome. And we're talking to Judge Gomal Singh Gill, and he's uh, just released the first report, which is available on the internet. There's another report in a year. Are you going to have interim reports as well before next September? No, the next report will be as mandated uh, September 30th of uh, next year, Judy. And the legislation you recommend here, yeah. how soon can we expect to see it? Well, that's not really something that we have control over. We've uh, reported out to government. And, yeah, but uh, come on, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. When do you think they're going to bring it forward? Uh, you probably know as much as I do, yeah. and that is government has indicated they're studying the report. And uh, I know that the HEU is asking that it come forward this session because a lot of health care workers are being injured, and we're going to deal with that as well mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Um, we'll go to the lines, and then I want to talk about uh, this Occupational Health and Safety Agency sure. that you recommend. Uh, Norm from Victoria. Hi, Norm. Hi there. Uh, yeah, I uh, like. okay, I want to ask you some questions here. Uh, okay, uh, Shipyard workers are classed as full-time, uh, part-time workers, like because you work, you know, maybe two, three weeks, and you're off for a couple of weeks, and Probably you know, part-time. Yeah. And, and um, anyways, I, I worked in shipyards. I got injured, and um, uh, the thing is that uh, they want to know my what my earnings were, and then they said, no, we have to go buy your last year's earnings. And, and my last year's earnings also have UIC because, like, you're, when you're on part time, like you have a oh, right, right. UI claim going, eh? Right. And uh, compensation board, um, uh, WCB, does not use UIC as earnings. And I said, well, oh. I have to. It's earnings at the end of the year when I have to pay income tax on it. Right. And they say they give you seventy-five percent of your wages. That's baloney because, uh, like, and then I, I'm a diabetic. It costs me a couple hundred dollars a month for medical supplies. Right. Plus, I got to pay for my own medical and my own dental. Right. And and. And, you know, and then plus my rent, housing, you know, everything, you know. Yeah, and okay. Well, let me, let me ask him. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I've had people say that before. Uh, it's, it's not really the taxable income that the government taxes you on. It's just, just uh, actual employment income. Yeah, that's a great question. So many of the monetary benefits that uh, are provided under workers' compensation legislation currently depend on their, or are related to what the worker was earning or is deemed to have been earning at the time of the injury. Right. And uh, they're... Uh, uh, defined as quote-unquote average earnings and uh, that is a very important area of our uh, inquiry to look into whether or not to the mechanism for determining average earnings for for compensation benefit purposes is exactly. indeed fair. Now it's been 20 years <coughs> since this has been reviewed hasn't it? The 30. WCB. 30 years yeah. okay so that's one reason why it's really not working. Uh, you recommend that there be a joint health and safety committee virtually at every workplace and even if you have a small business there should be someone who's your representative for a health and safety committee. Well we've recommended health and safety committees for uh, hazardous uh, industries mm -hmm. uh, having 20 or more workers. Mm -hmm. Okay now in and that, that essentially is the status quo. Right. Uh, except, uh, let me just finish, yeah. there are some that are currently not defined as being hazardous mm -hmm. that don't require health and safety uh, committees unless they have more than 50 employees. And we're concerned, we identified that there may be situations where uh, some of those uh, employers should indeed have health and safety committees even though they have less than 50 workers. Okay, so there's going to be a lot more regulation and legislation. I mean, you, what I think is good is you want things better defined in law and regulation. So it's not all this gray area that somebody can make an arbitrary decision on. Mm -hmm. But you also say that if there's a dispute between the employer and the employee um, with respect to implementing some of the health and safety recommendations that the employee can then go to the occupational health and safety agency or some representative and can try to get them to help uh, or intervene or to mediate this disagreement. In British Columbia there's a huge antagonism in many sectors between employers and employees. How on earth is that going to be workable? Well uh, within the uh, 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 limits of the board's jurisdiction, the board has to resolve those disputes where they're called in to resolve what... Uh, the board it, or the agency, right? Depending on whether it's the Workers' Compensation Board or some new agency. Yeah, okay. for, the, for the time being it's the board, uh, yeah. but it would be the Health and Safety Agency, which would be the board or, or some other agency uh, in terms of how we uh, recommend it. But, but someone has to resolve that, and one of the big uh, uh, concerns that we heard echoed throughout the public hearings was that there uh, were situations where health and safety committees 
uh, for example, in hospitals, would make recommendations for some kind of uh, an improvement, and uh, they would never hear anything back from the employer, not a yay or an, uh, nor a nay. And uh, to my way of thinking, that really negates the whole purpose. If you're going to have a health and safety okay. committee make recommendations, so it lowers then, morale, uh, th then certainly uh, I think that there should be some kind of a response from the employer. So what we've determined is that there should be a mechanism where the employer must respond. Mm -hmm. And uh, if... Uh, That's going to be quite controversial for a lot of employers. They're going to be seeing well, that as interfering. It may well, but we're not directing uh, or recommending that the employer has to comply with a health and safety committee recommendation, only that they have to respond. Okay. We're going to take a call now from Karen in Nanaimo. Hi, Karen. Hello. Hi. Go ahead. Congratulations to you, Judy, oh. and to you, Mr. Judge Gill, and the Commission. Oh, good. Now, <laughs> my question is, why does government have to be involved in it? Why are we going to have someone that is only worried about the next election? Are they going to get re-voted on mm -hmm. so they make all the plum political appointments? Mm -hmm. Why is it government? Okay. Why can it not be someone like Judge Gill, mm -hmm. it, the what he would be given right. under a judicial power instead of, well, I tell you to do this, but you're the politician. You don't have to vote on that. It might cost you some votes. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. I think that's a very compelling argument. Maybe add to that. Why wouldn't it be private insurance? Well, okay, that raises about three or four different issues. But <laughs> okay, let me, you got 30 seconds. Go. Yeah, let me address it as quickly <laughs> as I can, at least the way I saw it initially. And that, and that is, you know, that we're not saying that... Uh, that, that government is now going to be making all the decisions. Uh, government can only do so much. Statutes can only do so much. Laws. Laws can only do so much. Somebody has to implement them, and, and what you then have is subordinate legislation, such as regulations, that, that give uh, effect to, to, um, to the policy set out in statutes. So uh, it's not a question of who does it. All sorts of people will become involved in the system in terms of delivery of services. But the question of accountability, there's got to be a mechanism for it to go back, wind its way back up to the people that are ultimately accountable, and that is elected lawmakers. And judges are not very accountable, Judge Gill. <clears throat> Well, that's another <laughs> that's issue. That's another issue. That's program. a whole hour. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll take more of your calls, and we're talking about the first report of the Royal Commission on WCB. So soft, so soft. You love it. Just one touch of it. You know down it does it. So soft on your skin. Come on in. Clothes can be stiff without a fabric softener, but even when you hang them to dry indoors, Ultra Downy leaves clothes feeling softer with all that freshness. You love it, only Downy does it. Come on into Downy. For great value, get the new Downy Starter Kit now. Of all their delicate parts, tender, sensitive spots. One of the tenderest sits in a diaper all day long. While a wipe may feel soft here, you may need a gentler wipe here. Baby Fresh and Pampers made a wipe quilted thick, clinically shown to be gentler, without the coarse bits like the other leading brand. So clean with a touch just as gentle as your own. Pampers Baby Fresh. Pamper the skin they're in. Warham's key tags are a symbol of our work for child amputees. Through the CHAMP program, children receive the artificial limbs they need to lead active lives. As they grow up, the war amps will be there, providing information, guidance, and so much more. The war amps, amputees helping amputees. Thanks to your support of the key tag service, lost key return, now by courier. Over the years, my tastes have matured. Now, I prefer more refined things, like this rigatoni. It's got beef, spices, Romano cheese. Mom, you want some? No, I'm not hungry. Chef Boyardee's special recipe, four varieties for those with more grown-up tastes. <laughs> Does using butter to make grilled cheese really cheese you off? Instead, spray buttery flavor Pam on your pan to get buttery grilled cheese everyone will love. For no-stick grilling, no other cooking spray beats Pam. Coming up, a two-part series on the crisis in healthcare on Tuesday and Wednesday. Then we'll, look, we'll show you Jericho Hill, and we'll be doing a preview of Christmas books with some authors next week. And today we're doing the Royal Commission with Judge Gill, and we'll go straight back, back to the phones? Sure. Okay. We will talk to Richard in Vancouver. Hi, Richard. Hi, how are you? Hi, fine, thanks. Go ahead. Judge Gill, it's uh, Richard. I was in front of the Royal Commission in New Westminster on uh, One Man Limited Company when I was held 
Kurt, pardon me, at the uh, shop in North Vancouver. Hi, Richard. Hi, how are you? Mm-hmm. It's nice to see you on TV, yeah. uh, representing the workers. My problem is still the same as the Limited Companies Act was changed on the 1st of 1975, and I, they registered me as a one-man limited company. I'm still unable to find a way to get compensation for the loss of the one eye and uh, okay. being hurt on the job. Okay. Well, thank you for that. This, I guess, raises that idea of the self-employed people with no employees. Oh, well, this is a bit different because it's, a, it's once you're incorporated, uh, you, you become uh, liable, uh, even under the current system, to comply oh. with the, all the OSH rules and, uh, and, OSH, and whatnot. OSH, so, health and safety. Okay. Yeah, sorry for that. Yeah, jargonism. That's Jargon. okay. And so in his case, what, what can you say? I mean, uh, is it that the system is going to change? He hasn't been able to comp- yeah. be compensated? Well, as I recall, and from what uh, he's just mentioned, I think his issue really doesn't relate to what, the fact that he's a one-man in company or, um, or, or not. It's simply a recognition of the injury that he sustained, and he doesn't feel that it's been... Uh, adequately recognized, so right. it's it's really not a it's not a coverage issue in terms of the form of your business. It's more of a coverage issue in terms of recognizing the illness. The rate of compensation, and I hope in his case as well that he's contacted his MLA. I mean, they're, they're, your MLAs are there; they're working for you. Never be afraid to pick up the phone and to and to bug them into uh, helping you out. That's really sad. Um, let's talk to Sherry now in Victoria. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Hi. Go ahead. Hi. I've had um, been on WCB for the last eight years. I've had six back surgeries and um, am very, very severely injured and have chronic pain that I have to take uh, morphine for daily. And by WCB's own evaluation that they paid for, it said that I was only able to uh, work for 20 minutes stint and then I had to lay down in a bed for 20 minutes. Right. They then deducted $1,000 almost off my payment because they said, Oh, you could telephone solicit out of your bed and, and, and make that money. And now I have to hire a lawyer and get this money back, even though my doctors all say I can't do it, right. even though the myelogram says my nerves are being compressed and that's why I have such chronic pain right. and the medication makes it unable for me to concentrate. Even though I have all that data, WCB is a law unto itself and says, yeah, but we don't see it that way. Okay. Well, thank you for, for sharing your story, and, and that's, a bit of, that's a horror story there. Uh, in a case like that, uh, WCB is the, you know, they're the, the judge and jury, and uh, she's really locked out. Well, yeah, well, one of the big issues uh, in this caller is, uh, from her perspective, I think, that we're going to be looking into most certainly is the whole issue of return to work following an injury. Right. You want, uh, certainly we want to encourage, I think, uh, people to return to work as soon as possible, but not uh, where they're putting themselves at further risk. Which is frequently the case, actually. Which can be the case, yeah. yeah. So uh, the issue arises as to to what degree should the workplace uh, be required to accommodate the worker who's been injured in returning to work to enable them to uh, gradually return to work in a safe manner. Right. Uh, and, and to what degree does that activity, that function, should it be coordinated between the workers' compensation board, between the employer, the, the, the workers' doctors? It seems that all these parties need to get together and uh, determine uh, what would be the best course of action for, uh, for, a, for a particular worker to be reintegrated back into the workplace. And uh, so that's an area that we're very interested in looking into to see. Okay, so these are all things that you're still examining now. And people should understand the uh, Royal Commission process. This is just your first report. Another report's coming out in September of 98. And in the meantime, there's no more public hearings, though, are there? No, the public hearings uh, are essentially concluded. Uh, there's a couple of days of uh, hearings that we've got uh, later this week that we had pre booked uh, because we couldn't get them in. Uh, 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 before the uh, October okay. report, but uh, certainly uh, written submissions, we're still open to anyone with written submissions on any topic. So uh, all these people who can't, haven't been able to talk to you today can write to you and give you their case? Yes, and okay. they can uh, call the Commission offices for an information kit if they need it uh, to assist them in preparing it. Those uh, submissions are open uh, for, uh, t- for us to receive up until the 31st of January, Judy. Okay. Well, I have to tell you, I'm really pleased with some of the changes you're recommending. I hope they happen soon. Uh, I want to leave as many people as possible with an idea of what's in your report with respect to the rights of a worker to receive information. Uh, and I noticed that on, on page 38, I think it's number 11, you say that the Occupational Health and Safety Statute, and so the law that you're recommending, yes. say a worker has a right to receive appropriate training, information, instructional services, and supervision on matters of occupational health and safety, especially in relation to their work and work environment. Now, how reasonable is this? I mean, yes, it's wonderful. Everybody should know what their rights are. All the employers should know what their responsibilities are. Is it working in other provinces? Uh, yes, I think a lot of these uh, recommendations that we have made, although they might seem groundbreaking here, uh, have been in, in uh, the, the uh, statutes of other provin- 
provinces for, uh, for many years. So to a large extent, we're playing catch-up. Uh, but uh, we feel, as a commission, that there uh, are certain fundamental rights and duties that need to be set out in a statute so that everyone knows what so their rights the are. it's a law instead of just a regulation that's an agency. Sure. Some people should have to know, you know, be able to know what they are entitled to on the one hand and what is expected of them on the other. Okay. Now, the lines are still jammed. Everybody wanted to talk to you, so hopefully they'll have a chance to write to you or phone you or something. And you'll come back later. Yes, I will. Okay, you can give us an image. Part three. So, and, and here's how you can contact us if you want to uh, contact us on this or other issues. And you can write to Tayabji, 780 Kings Road, Victoria, B.C., V8T, 5A2. Fax is at 250-389-1226. Email is tayabji at wic.ca. And our website, which has information on this and other shows, www.checktv.com. And we'll be right back after a quick break. Moose, Eaton's Holiday Jester, greatest of all gift-giving suggesters, with Eaton's gifts astronomic, Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein, Sony to Panasonic, Barbie, Lego, fragrances galore, weekly deals in every store, all with Eaton's famous guarantee, but don't forget me, Eaton's Holiday Jester, Tony 993, we are your holiday store, I'm never at home, why would I leave my phone there? What do you get with Amigo Digital? Every month you get 100 anytime minutes and 100 first incoming minutes free. Yeah, I'm free. Free. You get call display. Staying in touch doesn't mean staying in. And oh yeah, there's no long-term contract. I call shots. And you get it all for just $19.95 a month. Amigo Digital. It goes with you. How can you give someone a taste of something this refreshing, this cool, this holiday season? Give a Brita water filter system. It's a really cool gift. Safeway's December coupon book is here, and it's filled with savings that'll leave you feeling jolly. Like Lucerne ice cream, assorted varieties, get two two-liter cartons for just $3.99. Or Safeway Select Soft Drinks, assorted varieties, three two-liter bottles are only $2. And what about the Duracell batteries? Assorted varieties, just $2.99 each. Safeway's December coupon book. The deals are in the bag. Safeway Food and Drug, today's better way. Hey, don't switch that dial, because this is going to make you smile. Dress up in this great Aaliyah pant for only $29. This holiday from Eaton's. And there's me, Mr. Magical Moose. <laughs> only $9.93. Over the last two months, we've done a number of programs on the healthcare system, and you, the viewers, told us that it's a system in crisis. As you know, we've wanted to focus more attention on this issue. And as a result, we have a two-part series on the crisis in healthcare starting tomorrow. And today we talked about the WCB first report of the Royal Commission. Now, if you have the same frustration I do and that you'd like to have more information readily available, please call your local newsroom or newspaper because I know for me it's hard to try to give you all the information in one hour and hear from you. I wish we could have just heard from you on your ideas on the report. Here's how you can contact the Royal Commission, though, if you have something that you want to make sure Judge Gill sees. It's the Royal Commission on WCB, 1440-625 Howe Street, Vancouver, B.C., V6C2T6. The phone number is 604-660-0130. Toll free is 1-800-522-0312. And you can have a copy of the Royal Commission's report at www.bcroyalcom.org. And even if you don't have internet at home, you should be able to access it at most libraries now. And if you are a worker or if you run a business, you should read it because they're trying to deal with all the occupational health and safety issues in the province, and there's quite a few. And I think there's going to be a cost implication, although that's not the mandate of the Royal Commission. What they're saying, and I think it's very important, is that for once we introduce some accountability into the WCB. Hooray! I'm amazed it's taken us this long to have something that's similar to a government report telling us this. Now I hope the legislature brings this forward as soon as possible so we can start fixing some of the huge problems in the system. I'm Judy Tayabji, and that's my opinion. What's yours?
Check TV. It's here where you can't relax. Michael Keaton and Glenn Close rumble. It's here. Check TV. Today on Canadian Living TV. Easy ways to relieve stress and strain. The country's top rated toys. Yippee! We visit a trading post in northern Manitoba. Even cool sweater set as a hot fashion trend. Such as and grilling up the catch of the day. 